Good evening and welcome to the Monday, October 5th, 2015 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Could I ask the clerk to call the roll, please? Certainly. Honorable Mayor Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Here. Alderman Beidler. Here. Alderman Pandalian is absent. Alderman Newman is absent. Alderman Tack. Here. Alderman Reisenberg. Here. Alderman Edelman. Here. Alderman Moreno. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Betty, very much. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. First item on the agenda this evening is comments by Mayor. I did want to make uh, one comment. If you are here by chance this evening for uh, an item that's on the agenda later under new business, uh, dealing with the Winter Club, um, don't need to stay because that motion or that uh, item has been tabled until the October 19th meeting, uh, two weeks from this evening. So feel free if you are here to stay as long as you like. I'm not kicking you out. But in case you're here for only that reason, you're welcome to leave and we'll see you on the 19th. Uh, my first item is uh, a couple of resolutions and a proclamation. I actually have one resolution tonight of appreciation for employee Kevin Issel, and I'd like to read it if I could. Whereas Kevin W. Issel has been a dedicated employee of the City of Lake Forest since August 23, 1988. And whereas Kevin W. Issel will honorably retire from the city on October 16, 2015. Whereas Kevin W. Issel served in the following positions during his dedicated career. Firefighter paramedic from 1988 to 1993. Promoted to lieutenant paramedic in 1994. Appointed to captain paramedic in 2005. And appointed to deputy chief in 2007. Whereas during his career he served as a public educator, hazardous materials technician, county trench rescue team, department training officer, the city's ESDA coordinator, and the Illinois Fire Service Intelligence Officer. Whereas Kevin W. Issel was awarded several honorable mentions from Lake Forest residents and received several certifications through the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Lake Forest that the Council, on behalf of the administration and residents of the community, hereby expresses its appreciation and gratitude to Kevin W. Issel for a public service faithfully performed. And be it further resolved that this resolution be appropriately inscribed and conveyed to Kevin W. Issel with a copy to be included in the official minutes of the October 5, 2015 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. So moved. Do I have second. a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion's approved. Kevin, would you? On behalf of my family and myself, uh, what a wonderful career it's been. What an amazing city to work for. Uh, wonderful staff, great teamwork. But in particular, um, these fire guys you see in the back of the room, uh, it's really an amazing organization to work with. I will treasure my experience and knowledge that I've gained from them and take that on into my future career. Um, just uh, very grateful to have had this opportunity. Thank you very much. That's, Kevin. That's what the beer was for? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Now, you didn't tell everybody where you're going, so in case they're out there, they can come visit. Yeah, Aspen snow mass. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we take back all the good things we said. Oh. <laughs> Kevin, best of luck. Yeah. Um, for someone who's been here since 1988, when we say that we're going to miss someone, I think that's an understatement. So we wish you all the best 
much success, great happiness, and all the best in your next move. You will be missed. Next item on the agenda under Mayor's comments uh, is a proclamation, and I'd like to read it if I may, relative to Harvey D. Kane Day on October 9, 2015. Whereas Harvey D. Kane, a 1952 graduate of Lake Forest College, was born on campus in the former Alice Home Hospital, the son of Lake Forest College graduates Ruth Dunning, class of 1929, and Harvey Kane, class of 1930, who also served as a board member of the college in the 1960s. And whereas Kane is among a long line of graduates of Lake Forest College and residents of the city of Lake Forest and members of the Kane family, who lived for nearly a century on Illinois Road, across the street from Farwell Field, in the home Kane's grandfather built in the early 1900s. And whereas Kane double majored in chemistry and biology at Lake Forest College, earned his MD at Northwestern University and his JD at Lincoln Law School. And whereas being a long distance biker, runner, and swimmer, at the age of 85, Kane embarked upon a nearly 3,000 mile bicycle trek on Route 66 across the United States to arrive in the city where he was born in time for the Lake Forest College homecoming celebration on October 8th through the 10th, 2015. And whereas Kane began his journey from his hometown in Sacramento, California, in his quest to raise scholarship money for future foresters, and along the way pedaled across eight states, three time zones, attained an elevation of nearly 7,000 feet, and endured desert heat, rural isolation, and city traffic to reach his birth state of Illinois. And whereas Lake Forest College, to honor Kane for his extraordinary effort, will host a celebratory bike ride at 11 a.m. on Friday, October 9, 2015, followed by a reception where the community will have an opportunity to meet Kane and hear his story. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Donald P. Schoenheider, Mayor of the City of Lake Forest, do proclaim Friday, October 9, 2015, as Harvey D. Kane Day and encourage residents to partake in this historic mo moment for our city and for Lake Forest College. Could I ask uh, if Mr. Phil Hood, are you here, Phil? Thank you for this uh, proclamation. Um, yeah, this is a really big week at the college. Um, we're expecting a record number of alumni back uh, this weekend. We have over 800 alumni registered. And one of the real highlights is going to be Harvey Kane's arrival. Uh, when he approached us last November, uh, I was actually with him in San Francisco. And he had this idea. And um, and you know, I kind of was taken aback, and I, and I said, really, 3,000 miles, uh, you'd like to make this trek? And so he started in July, and we've had a lot of fun with this. Um, year to date, we're about 200 alumni donors above where we were a year ago, and much of that's attributed to uh, how he's inspired our alumni base. And I know that we haven't seen the end of the, the gifts that are gonna come in through this, with so many people having the opportunity to interact with uh, with Harvey over the weekend. Um, the weekend does begin on uh, Thursday evening. Our annual Oppenheimer uh, lecture uh, will begin at 7.30 in the Presbyterian Church. Sherry Turkle, who's a renowned uh, social psychologist and uh, who wrote the uh, New, York, New York Times bestseller, Alone Together, Together, about people's relationship with technology will be uh, featured on Thursday evening. And also just wanna bring to everyone's attention that um, on Saturday, our Forester Fan Fest uh, will be held over by our Sports and Recreation Center beginning at noon. The whole community is invited uh, to that. Uh, Harvey will be around um, for that. Uh, food and drinks will be available for people. And then our 2 p.m. kickoff of the uh, football game, Harvey will actually be riding his bike out uh, to the 50-yard line uh, for the, uh, the coin flip uh, with, with the game ball. So it's, it's going to be a really great weekend uh, back on the campus. Thanks for this proclamation, and um, we appreciate the community support.
Thanks. Thank you, Phil, very much. Have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to being a part of it. Uh, and that ends my comments by mayor. Next item on the agenda, comments by city manager Bob Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council this evening, I have no report. Okay, thank you. Item number three on the agenda this evening, comments by council members. First item under the Public Works Committee, consideration of an ordinance establishing the City of Lake Forest Special Service Area number 40, Regency Lane Area Sanitary Improvement Project, presented by Alderman Kathy Waldeck, Chairman of the Public Works Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll go through a brief recap of this project. I know you've all seen it before, so I'll try to move through it pretty quickly here. Um, as we all know, city staff has been working with the Regency Na Lane neighbors uh, regarding the possibility of installing sanitary sewers. And uh, an SSA or special service area is typically the mechanism uh, used to fund these infrastructure improvements. This would be a city funded project. The money would be paid back over 20 years. It would be divided equally amongst the 15 parcels at a 3.04% interest. There have been a number of meetings with residents and the majority of residents have signed a petition uh, endorsing the SSA. Pursuant to state law, a public hearing was opened on August 17th. Pursuant to law, residents have 60 days after that time to file a letter of objection and at least 51% of the property owners and 51% of the electors in the proposed area must formally object to the SSA in order for it to not be adopted. October 16th ends that 60 day period. We have not had any uh, objections to date. Page three of uh, the agenda, uh, goes through the cost breakdown, the total cost of the project, the total cost per lot, and the annual cost per lot. Uh, there is a cap on the amount uh, annually that each homeowner can be asked to pay or contribute over the 20 year life of this project. On, uh, as you may recall, on August the 3rd, uh, City Council approved the proposing ordinance for this SSA. Tonight, we are asking to approve first reading of the establishing ordinance. We will then return for final approval after the 60-day objection period has run, um, which would be our next City Council meeting on Monday, October the 19th, I think, is, is the date. Uh, so, uh, Given that, uh, are there any questions regarding this first uh, part of the uh, of the action? Questions of Alderman Waldeck? Kathy, there's no change from the last time that this came before us, is there? Are you asking if there's any change between the proposing ordinance and this ordinance? I think there may have been one, and I see Vic um, and I'll turn it over to you. I think there was one um, change, and that was highlighted uh, in your packet, but I'm going to pass it over to, to Vic to clarify that. Actually, this is the first time you've seen this ordinance. Uh, it may look a lot like the proposing ordinance, but it has a different function. The first one was the kickoff. It set off our maximum authorizations. This will be the actual ordinance to establish it. And there are some technical differences between the two documents. In terms of the thresholds of authority that were in the proposing ordinance, those are the same as in this one at this point. Um, there's still some refinement that will uh, potentially occur between now and the final reading of this. As we get a little more information, the next item we'll talk a little bit about that. And we also will have in the final ordinance that you'll be considering in two weeks, um, the ability to, to make final tweaks even after the project is done so we have a more refined number as to the final tax. Does that answer your question, Jack? Yes. Okay. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I will ask. Um, hey, hold on. I, I like, is there anyone from the public that would like to comment on this matter? Okay. And if, if not, if not, um, we are seeking, um, I would ask then for approval of first reading for the ordinance establishing the City of Lake Forest Special Service Area Number 40, Regency Lane Area Sanitary Improvement Project. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. It passes. Moving on to the second piece of this, um, we are also at this time tonight seeking award of construction contracts and engineering oversight agreements for this SSA. Uh, this project went out to bid. The bids were opened uh, at the end of September. Uh, the three bids uh, that we received, which are in your packet as well, um, were all higher than our engineering estimate. We were uh, able to further lower the amount of the lowest of the low bidder, which was R. A. Mancini, um, in, in in several ways. Um, first of all, by uh, we, we decided or that we could do some of the work in house, and also uh, by contracting directly with the landscaper, which is Perez and Peter Baker for the asphalt. Uh, so, th using those two. Um, uh, by, the, by, by those two means, uh, we were able to lower the original amount of the bid from 828000 to 665000 uh, Also, as typically is found in a project like this, staff is also requesting a 10% non-contractor specific contingency fee. Uh, due to the aggress aggressive construction schedule, we are seeking approval of the construction contracts and the engineering agreement tonight. Our intent uh, would be to complete the paving before Baker's plant closes, which is typically uh, sometime in November, perhaps the third week of November or so, and approving the contracts tonight allows us to do so. Uh, if this project doesn't get paved this fall, we will then have to put in temporary asphalt and if we can avoid putting the temporary asphalt in, we will save approximately $29,000 on the cost of the project for the homeowners. So what we're asking to do is to go ahead and approve uh, the base contract to Mancini as well as the contracts to Perez and Peter Baker and the 10% non-contractor specific contingency fund, um, as well as the, the oversight engineering, uh, which is go out Hamilton. So we're asking to get that all in place so that we can move forward as quickly as possible on the 19th of October. Any questions, questions for Kathy? Vic? Uh, there was one comment that um, I shared with the Public Works Committee that the council ought to be aware of. This schedule proposes two, or is based on two assumptions. One is that uh, when the establishing ordinance comes forward to you on the 19th, that you approve it. Uh, and <laughs> that one's the easy one. Uh, and two, because of the desire to accelerate everything, after tonight's mo uh, uh, motion, if it's approved, staff intends to move forward with the contract. That means we have a 10-day period where there could be an objection to the SSA. There is a risk you can measure in your own judgment, the Public Works Committee thought it was modest, uh, that the contract after being established won't be able to go forward if the SSA is, is objected to. So knowing that uh, is part of what you have to consider as you vote tonight. Any other questions for Kathy or for Vic? Yeah, I, I'm, that last piece I'm not sure I understood. Do we have, to, is, do we have any monies at risk here? And if so, how much? Um, if we move forward and the SSA is objected to, there will be some activities that are expected from Mancini during that 10-day period. Part of it may be ordering of materials. The materials, the public works staff is confident, could be used for another project, so it's just a matter of buying stuff in advance. There may be some soft cost incurred, and those might be then at risk. Magnitude, I, I don't have a good number on that. I don't know if Mike wants to venture a guess, but. Can I just say, with, I mean, I don't want to drag this thing up. The feeling is it's de minimis? Yes. Okay. Yeah, fine. we're, that's, we're that's confident all. that that's it all. seems to be going forward. That's I all. think the, the other thing, Jack, that, you know, and there's no guarantees, um, but 60% uh, of the homeowners signed a petition endorsing the SSA sure. in order for it to not be approved um, that's so awkward to say that, but I don't know how to say it better. To, for it not to be, a, a, we need 51%, obviously lower than 60%, of the, 
of the property owners and in addition to that, 51% of the electors because there may be more than one elector in a household but one, only one property owner um, in a household. So both of those things uh, have to be, there have to be a formal objection by both those groups uh, by, this, uh, by October 16th. Uh, okay. Could that happen? It, it could. But it's, could. That's fine. Okay. Let's go. Any other questions? Anyone from the public care to comment on this? If not, I'd like to ask for a motion for the approval of the following Regency Lane Area Sanitary Sewer Improvement Contracts. The base contract to R.A. Mancini in the amount of $665,727. Perez Landscaping in the amount of $6,720. Peter Baker and Sons in the amount of $46,142. The ability to, for any unforeseen circumstances, provide a 10% non-contractor specific contingency of $71,859 to be approved for use with any of the three contractors above, and Gewald Hamilton for engineering oversight in the amount of $35,000. Do I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Six yeas, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Biddy, very much. And the next item, and not to let you off the hook, uh, consideration and approval to engage the professional services of Alfred Benish and a company, and company, Leggett Architects, to complete the phase two construction documents for the East Train Station Stage Three Interior Improvements, also presented by Alderman Waldeck. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as uh, you all recall, uh, the city has re received an ITEP grant uh, for over $2 million of federal funds for interior and exterior restoration of the East Side train station. Uh, those uh, funds are administered in an 80-20 uh, split with 80% being funded by the grant and 20% uh, the responsibility of the city. That money, that federal money, also runs through IDOT, um, the state agency. That's how it gets to us. We completed phase one, which was the roof, which was completed with this grant, and we're now moving on to stage two, which is the exterior, and stage three, which is the interior of this, the train station. The city is now seeking, or city staff is now suggesting, uh, with the uh, endorsement of the Public Works Committee, approval to hire an engineering firm which is Banesh, uh, who will then subcontract with an architectural firm, which is Leggett. Uh, Banesh is being recommended because they have a lot of experience in dealing with IDOT. They are very familiar uh, with the processes and with the paperwork involved in getting a project through IDOT. Uh, the architect, Leggett, has significant uh, experience in the building of train stations and in the renovation of uh, historic train stations. The bulk of the improvements uh, to the interior are mechanical in nature. They are uh, in the nature of electrical upgrades, HVAC upgrades, uh, making the station ADA compliant, uh, upgrading, renovating the bathrooms, making those ADA compliant as well, and possible replacement of the floor. Uh, the next question becomes one of schedule and timeline, and your packet outlines three options. Option number one would be funding these, com these improvements completely through the ITEP grant, which includes the 80-20 split. Option number two would be to fund it partially ourselves, and option number three would be to fund it completely ourselves. And what is being recommended here tonight is option number two, uh, in which we would expend an additional $20,000 of our funds. Would, uh, it would allow us to finish up to three months sooner. And, and that may not sound like a very long period of time, uh, but when you're looking at an end date of February or March of 2016, uh, that three months that pushes it up to say December of 20 or late November of 2016 um, becomes very important indeed uh, because uh, during that time, uh, those cold winter months to have our commuters outside the train station and not be able to use the interior of the train station, um, it, it, is, it is something that's, that's significant uh, and that's 
definitely uh, a, a consideration. Uh, there is one other um, consideration here as well, and that is uh, the historic nature of the building. Um, as many of you may remember, uh, the Lake Forest Preservation Foundation has been very much involved, very intric intricately involved uh, with the planning of this project and in fact um, generated a document, a historic structures report, a very comprehensive document relating to the East Side train station renovation. Uh, we met today uh, with members of the Preservation Foundation, one of whom is here tonight, who I'm going to call upon in a, in a, in a moment, um, along with the architects. And we had, a, I think, a very uh, productive, uh, very, uh, very good meeting, uh, which was then carried over uh, to, uh, to our Public Works Committee meeting. And I think we now have uh, an agreement amongst the parties that the Preservation Foundation will very much have a seat at the table when it comes uh, to, to this project and will work hand in hand with uh, Leggett Architects. Uh, so uh, there is an, an assurance here, I think, or we feel assured that this is a, is a project that um, will not only be done expeditiously, uh, but, but done right. And, and it's very, very important uh, to all of us, I know, to, to get this right. So without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, a few people to come up and say a few words. We do have representatives from uh, Liget Architects, and, and if you're willing, I'd ask you to come up and uh, perhaps uh, give a short presentation to City Council along the lines of what you presented us tonight. Um, and then if he's willing, I'm going to call upon Art Miller uh, to uh, come up and say a few words on behalf of the Preserva Preservation Foundation as well. So. Uh, thank you, Alderman Wal uh, Waldock. Uh, my name is Mark Rohde with Leggett Architects, and uh, joining me tonight is Bill Epp from Benish, and we've partnered together to bring you what we think to be a really solid team for your project, recognizing the need for an architect with train station experience, as well as somebody with an expertise in IDOT work. And we've done a number of IDOT projects ourselves, but Benish really has a good handle on that, and I'm going to let uh, Bill touched on that in a minute. Uh, we have been in uh, practice for over 50 years. We are probably done close to 30 metro stations alone, a uh, number of historic renovations as well as new stations. We've done several multimodal stations. We're getting ready to start a large project in Rockford. We're doing a rehab of an old Sears warehouse into a train station and hotel in Moline, the Quad Cities. So we're very well experienced in this type of work. Uh, I just finished up a very similar project to yours, also using grant funding for LaGrange. It's called the Stone Avenue Station. Uh, we're very aware of the historic nature of the station. Uh, we did meet with Art and his group today, and I think we hit it off very nicely, and we're looking forward to working with them. One thing that we think sets Leggett apart is that we're very collaborative. We feel that it's best to engage everybody at the get-go, at the very first meeting. Uh, we don't want to be the architect that you know goes back, designs, and comes back and says, what do you think? And it's a reaction. It's more, we want you on board from the beginning. So we're, we're, we're welcome to uh, invite anybody who wants to take part of it, city staff, uh, you know, residents, uh, <coughs> Preservation Foundation, to make this a very collaborative process. So we think that's uh, good. That's the architectural side. Now on the technical paperwork side, I'm going to turn it over to Bill, and you can kind of continue on. Sure. So Bill Epp with Alfred Benish, and yeah, as Mark mentioned, we're on the team for two reasons. One, we're, we'll be the structural engineers for the limited amount of structural that's anticipated, but we're gonna help work through the Illinois DOT process. And uh, we do, Benish does millions of dollars of work every year with Illinois DOT and with federally funded projects. We've already been in contact, as well as your staff been in contract contact with Bureau of Local Roads to try and see what we can do to get this thing moving forward and you know, again we do we do a tremendous amount of this work thanks very much art would you mind stepping up and saying a few words Hi, I'm Art Miller, um, president of the Lake Forest Preservation Foundation, but also 169 Wildwood Road. 
Um, they're coming to get us. Uh, <laughs> Yes, we, we met with the group. We, what we did was we had a project done in 2008-2009 to assess uh, carefully the, the needs of that structure to figure out the history of it and what, 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 for some possible directions going forward. Um, we've met with the architects. We're pretty confident that uh, they're knowing about the same things uh, that we want them to know about. Um, they've worked on stations that some of us whiz past in the morning at... Um, uh, Winnetka, Hubbard Woods, Glencoe, Wimmet, and things like that. So they, they're used to our area of, of doing these things. Um, because this is a project that's partly grant funds, it's not going to be able to do everything we want. So we want to be sure in this process that we're not doing any things that have to be then kind of undone or done around or redone at a later stage. Uh, we want this to work uh, smoothly so that as we go forward with other pro processes, we'll be able to do that. Um, I don't think any of, anyone is too sanguine about these um, bids coming in uh, way low. Uh, these grants were written a, a long time ago. Uh, I think when the Dow Jones Industrial Average was about 10,000. And since then, building has picked up quite a bit. And so there may be some negative effects on these costs. So we'll be working with them to think about what we can do now, what we need to put forward into the future. But I think we're comfortable that we'll have a good re working relationship with them. Thank you very much. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Any questions? Any questions for Kathy? Mike? I'd just like to comment. It sounds like there's an excellent team in place to make this the best possible train station we can hope for. I, I, I would just echo that. It's very reassuring. Art, you know how much respect you command in this community and certainly in this room. And, uh, and, and I think we see you as fair-minded, but, but above all, you care about Lake Forest and its character. And so if this feels like something the Preservation Foundation can, can be happy about, and especially if you're, you're going to work together, I think that's going to make, that's going to guarantee you a much better experience in this community as well. We, we pass judgment on the quality of things. Uh, we, we, we just do. And uh, it's part of who we are. And so we have pretty high standards. And it sounds like uh, that they're going to be met. So well done. Anything else? I, I agree with those uh, comments. However, I am struggling with $20,000 for a month and a half to three months. Bob, can you speak to exactly what sure. that $20,000 is going to be used for? Yeah, um, and quite honestly, I think this uh, came up at a meeting we had maybe back in August because one of my biggest concerns, number one, is dealing with IDOT and the bureaucracy of IDOT and how that can slow down, and, and that's part of one of the reasons that we selected the team that we did. But I think also the the time frame. From my standpoint, the worst thing that I thought could happen was that we're in the middle of this renovation and winter sets in. Uh, because then all the commuters are standing outside during this period of time from December on. So really, the staff reached out to the consultant and said, how can we try and um, use some of the time that I don't want to call is wasted, but basically is sitting down at IDOT for them to review these contracts and agreements for a period of about 60 to 90 days and get a jump start on this so that we could take, uh, pick up two months at the beginning uh, of the project and save it on the back end of the project. And so they came back and basically the $20,000 will um, uh, get us to 30% uh, design, which will put us collectively in a good position because it will give us different concepts of what we can do and can't do and pricing, how much work will get done or not get done. And so really it was just a feeling of is it worth it $20,000 to be able to guarantee that this project will get done before fall weather sets in in 2016 or if not, as you can see from the option one, which is using all ITEP money, no city money, that potentially pushes it into January, February of 2017. And is it those um, designs and concepts um, that will really allow uh, Art and his group uh, uh, to sit down at the table with the architect and uh, discuss, you know, delve into the details? Yeah, I might also add that it's not necessarily going to get um, lost because the $20,000 it's the city would front is $20,000 It would not come out of the ITEP grant. 
So there will be $20,000 additional in the ITEP grant to actually do work uh, within the interior renovation. So it isn't money that's just being thrown away. It's almost like a shuffling of money where the city is actually giving more up front, but then that will allow more work to get done on the back end. Just so I understand. So the three months is January the 1st. The month and a half is a week or so before Thanksgiving. Correct? Yeah, I think it's November 15th of what are expected if we go this route. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm not going to stand out by myself on this thing, but I am still struggling with it. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? I would just say, Jack, I mean, I, normally I'm pretty f fiscally uh, conservative, but in this case, that is a train station that people I know, I would have to say, you know, as a, as a Ward 1 alderman, I believe I speak for my people when I say <laughs> winters are very cold here, and that's a, it's important that that be usable. There's just no alternative there. There's not, there's not I mean, I don't know where else you go. And uh, we can't take everybody who uses Lake Forest. We can't send them all down to Fort Sheridan. The schedule's even different there. Uh, I, th I feel like this is a very important community amenity, and to have it open in the winter months is, is going to be pretty significant. So that's just, just <laughs> from, from the Ward 1 uh, East Lake Forest perspective. Yes. I don't want to get into a, a tussle I, over that. I trust then you will owe me one. <laughs> I, I, okay. <laughs> With that, I'll move on. <laughs> I'll move on to asking for any public comment on this. <laughs> Seeing none, then I'd like to ask for a motion to authorize the mayor to execute a consultant agreement for design services with Alfred Benesh and Company Leggett Architects, contingent upon IDOT concurrence for Phase Two design engineering for the Central Business District train station, Stage Three improvements, interior, in an amount of fifty-six thousand three hundred and twenty-one dollars, to include the authorization to expend, if necessary, an additional amount not to exceed five percent of the contract award for unforeseen change orders that may occur during the administration, and to authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with Alfred Benesh and Company, Leggett Architects, to proceed with the development of preliminary phase two architectural design documents for an expense not to exceed $20,000. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Edelman. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Six yay. Zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Betty. I'm sure Alderman Reisenberg will be in front of the train station on November 15th. <laughs> see if it's open. Without my gloves. Without his gloves. <laughs> and I'll be there with my gloves. <laughs> and I would second the, the comments of Alderman Edelman. It's a great team effort. We appreciate every, everyone and the Preservation Foundation for their great involvement and their contributions. So thank you. Next item on the agenda, opportunity for citizens to address the City Council on non-agenda items. Dave? <laughs> but thank you. Dave, would you no, state I your, your out another one of those forms? <laughs> Dave, would you please state your name and address, please? Uh, David Mattoon, 1547 North Sheridan Road. And on this part, um, I'm a member of Operation Life or a volunteer with Operation Lifesaver, which is a train safety organization, and a member of the DuPage Railroad Safety Council. So um, Metra had a safety blitz uh, in Westlake Forest, and um, I want to uh, extend our congratulations for the marvelous um, support of the city. Metra has about 50 of these station blitzes and does about another 20 during Illinois Rail Safety Week, and I've been on about 30 of them. And it's very rare that we see all the participation that we got here. The mayor was here, the police chief, um, fire chief, deputy police chief, many um, police
police officers from the, uh, both shifts, I mean, seven to nine and you know, five to seven and seven to nine. And as you can see here, and I didn't have time to reformat that, we got a, a email from Hillary Council, who's the director of safety. Um, I sit next to him on the DuPage Railroad Safety Council, so I think this is a genuine expression of his um, regard. Um, it says, while well, I was unable to attend the safety, station safety blitz yesterday, I would like to thank everyone on behalf of Metro for their efforts in making the Lake Forest uh, Milwaukee District North Line Station safety blitz a huge success, educating the public on the importance of, of behaving safely around the railroad is a very important component of preventing accidents and incidences. Your willingness to partner with Metra on this important initiative is greatly appreciated. And he quotes Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And while Hillary wasn't actually at the station, his subordinate Larry Green was on the phone to him during their oh, Friday staff infection meeting. They discussed every plans. So I'm sure that this is a heartfelt thanks from Hillary. Okay, and then um, and then, without my um, safety vest on, I want to uh, mention this uh, upcoming talk we're having this Friday, October 9th. It's uh, more or less a repeat of the one that we gave in April of um, the 1857 Platt. It's going to be um, Friday, October 9th um, at the um, Lily Reed Memorial Chapel um, from 1 to 2. And, our, and I are going to present the, uh, the, it says here the original plat mentioning North and Middle Campus. Well, that's, it's really this, essentially the same talk. This is just, um, the description's more oriented to the homecoming there at, at Lake Forest College. So um, if for some reason you weren't able to make the April meeting, you'll now have to come up with a different reason to not make this meeting. <laughs> Also from 5 to 6.30 at the Grand Art Institute, Grand Art Gallery um, Open House. The Grand Art Institute is the one at Caddy Corner from First Presbyterian Church. Uh, we're gonna have the same plats that we had displayed at the April meeting. So that's another chance for you to view those. And my final comment here is from the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Sally Jewell. He issued a change order changing the name of Mount McKinley to Denali on August 28, 2015. Jewell said the change had been a long time coming. So I leave you with the question now, what about Depot Avenue? Which was changed to McKinley Road. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, <Poor> McKinley. <laughs> Anyone else from the public here to make any comments? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Items, items for omnibus vote consideration. Uh, we have this evening six of them, as we always do. If any council member would like to take any of them individually, we may do so. Otherwise, I'll ask for a motion to improve the entire omnibus at the end. Item number one: approval of the September 8, 2015, City Council meeting minutes. Number two, approval of the September 21, 2015 City Council meeting minutes. Number three, the check register for the period August 29 to September 25, 2015. Number four, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Building Review Board, first reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. Number five, consideration of a motion and an ordinance approving recommendations from the Plan Commission and the Building Review Board for the Lake Forest townhomes, approval of a motion 
and first reading of an ordinance and if desired by the council final approval and consideration of an ordinance amending sections 50 and 51 of the city code bringing to solid waste and water second reading final approval anyone care to take any of those individually uh vic uh yes mr mayor members of the council there were two modest uh corrections that arrived uh, adjustments that i suggested to the minutes so if it might be as amended on the minutes very well anyone else if not, I'd ask for a motion to approve the omnibus uh, with comments made by uh, council. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. 68, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Biddy, very much. Next item on the agenda ordinances. We have no ordinances this evening. Number seven, ordinances affecting code amendments. We also have none of those this evening. Uh, item number eight, originally, if you missed the beginning of the meeting and you're maybe watching at home, uh, we had a, a topic relative to the Winter Club. That item has been postponed and will be on the agenda for the October 19th, uh, 2015 meeting, two weeks from this evening. Uh, any additional items for council discussion this evening? Alderman Moreno. I would just like to commend the Public Works Department for um, saving us money. Uh, I, I think that the SSA analysis was very well done, and I apologize for not uh, putting forth my comments when we reviewed the three bids that were presented, but I, I do think the Public Works Department did a great job, and I'm sure along with other departments in the city, to look at finding a way to do things more efficiently, effectively, and cost-effectively. So I just want to share that with the Council. Great. Thank you. And Alderman Edelman. Yeah, this weekend, for the first time in a while, I had occasion to visit Town Line Road, uh, the athletic fields. And I just want to comment that the turf is in fantastic condition. It's lush and thick like a carpet. And some of you were here, you may or may not recall that that turf started life as a really miserable piece of ground holding water, the grass wasn't taking, and we appropriated money. I think the figure 66,000 sticks in my mind to drill it and fill it. And I think that coupled with the clippings over the last few years have really turned it into a fantastic facility. I'm sorry, Sally's not here, and Dan Martin was earlier, but um, we made the right decision in doing that. Great. Anyone else? Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good evening. Mm.